I would first like to congratulate the authors on a well-designed and conducted study. This study methodology is critically important in today's cost-sensitive healthcare environment. I am an ADM user for both direct implant and two-stage implant-based reconstruction and recognize its benefits. However, it surprises me that hospital and payers continue to support the use of these expensive ADMs for implant-based reconstruction. For many years, we have been achieving excellent results prior to the popularization of ADM, and I just wonder how long this will continue. In my opinion, our specialty needs to be looking at alternatives to ADM with similar functional aesthetic outcomes at a lower price point. In our lab, as well as many others around the country, we are exploring combinations of biologically derived and synthetic tissue matrices as an alternative. Use of autologous deepithelialized breast skin is another cost-reducing strategy in select patients highlighted in this study. I agree with the overall findings and the results of this study. This alternative option seems to be cost-effective for certain patients. It would be helpful, however, for readers to understand the rough percentage of patients that are considered to be candidates for this technique and the selection criteria used to identify the patients. Despite the superb methodology used in this study, there are a few assumptions made in the model that deserve comment. First, Comparison of complication rates in only 118 patients in the autologous dermal flap group may be subject to some inaccuracies in the complication rates. These patients are likely highly selected for this procedure, and the complication rates varied from 0 to 27% in the five studies analyzed. Larger studies will be incredibly important to help elucidate more confidently and accurately the complication rates that are true. Number two, the impact of mastectomy skin flap necrosis should be carefully considered here. The authors assume that flap necrosis was debrided in the main operating room. In our institution, the vast majority of these procedures are performed in the outpatient clinic with considerably lower cost. In addition, the average CPT code for the debridement plus skin grafting was introduced into this model. Many would agree that the use of a skin graft is relatively uncommon to treat mastectomy skin flap necrosis. Most cases are able to be managed with debridement and simple closure. In addition, the authors assume a six-month recovery time for the treatment of mastectomy skin flap necrosis. This may be an overestimate as many patients undergo simple excision and closure with very little recovery and downtime. Three, the utilities of this model were determined from only 10 reconstructive surgeons, some experienced and some not experienced with the study design. While these methodologies are certainly appropriate, the cohort of participants should be carefully considered. Perhaps an alternative cohort would have been patients with breast cancer that have undergone implant-based reconstruction. It would also be helpful to understand how many of the 10 surgeons involved here were female. And four, unfortunately, as the authors point out, all of the studies used to calculate complication rates were from uncontrolled studies. There is no controlled study that directly compares ADM to autologous skin flap reconstruction. This is unfortunate, and I believe that this is an excellent opportunity for future studies and may have less bias and confoundation and result in higher quality comparative data. Overall, this study supports the use of autologous dermal flap reconstruction when it is available based on cost-effective analysis. A few observations, however, from this study are worth commenting upon. First, despite relatively similar complication rates between the two techniques, the distribution of complication types varied considerably. The magnitude and impact of the complications in the autologous dermal flap patients were considerably greater with 6.8% mastectomy skin flap necrosis and 4.2% explantation rate. The question remains whether this could be entirely explained by the proposition that these patients had more redundant mastectomy skin owing to a higher BMI and therefore a higher risk of these particular complications. However, I suspect there are other factors involved that were inherent in the technique itself. This will be important to evaluate and elucidate in future larger controlled studies. Second. It is surprising to me that the infection rate was so low in the autologous dermal flap group, despite high rates of other more serious complications. After deepithelializing the skin flap, the adnexal structures often harbor both epithelium and bacteria. Despite this, infection rate was very low. 
Could there be some benefit in using unprocessed autologous tissue for the dermal sling? Could autologous tissue have an antimicrobial effect? These questions are good opportunities for future evaluations and studies. This autologous dermal flap technique appears to be more cost effective than commercially available ADM for patients who are candidates. It would be important, again, to evaluate the optimal selection criteria for this technique and to identify the rough number of patients who would be good candidates. For the remainder of the patients, we need to think proactively about how we can control the cost of ADM breast reconstruction. Alternatively, as some authors have pointed out, should we be using ADM routinely for breast reconstruction at all? As I mentioned before, I think one possible solution is to provide a less costly alternative to ADM with equivalent and superior outcomes. There's a lot to think about with this manuscript and I congratulate the authors on an excellent, meaningful contribution to the plastic surgery literature. This is an extremely important topic that I'm sure we'll see future studies and more information to come. Thank you very much.